You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you for coming out to our Life on Gabriola Media Society launch. Uh, I think I mentioned not-for-profit, by the people, for the people. Uh, I'm super proud to be a part of something like this um, because I love this community, and I think there's a lot going on in this part of the world that uh, is newsworthy and is important and isn't being talked about. And I know we all care deeply about a number of different uh, issues and obstacles facing the Gulf Islands and uh, all the things. So it's a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time for the society and for Gabriola. And uh, with that, I think I'd like to pass it over to the, our board president, uh, Mr. Frank Moore. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Ben. Ben is, uh, did he say he's one of our board members? Um, and that's correct. All those things. Uh, and you'll meet uh, other of our board members later uh, in this presentation. Uh, some of them were able to be here. Uh, we really appreciate that. And we really appreciate the board members for supporting this brand new initiative. You know, to start something brand new uh, is fun, but uh, it's a lot of work. And the board members have been really stepping up to help out, uh, not just with board member stuff, but all sorts of things besides. As you can see... Uh, ben is doing and other people have done for today. Thank you for being here. This is a launch event and a volunteer sign up for the new Life on Gabriola TV, which uh, has been created by the Life on Gabriola Media Society. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the origins of the project, why uh, it exists. Uh, uh, but uh, first, I want to advise you that we are really happy to have you here today as well uh, because we need volunteers the whole concept behind this is that it is community driven we are very lucky to have some very skilled professional journalists uh, sort of uh, leading the way and providing training among other things but this must be community driven I'll tell you more about that. So we appreciate your being here today. And over there is a table where you can uh, find information and a form, which I will be happy to take from you after this, uh, to volunteer. And I and Teresa, our lead journalist, will be happy to answer your questions uh, after or even during this uh, event uh, and uh, tell you everything hopefully you need to know in order to decide how you might like to help with this new venture, Life on Gabriola TV. A new, uh, I would suggest very radically new, journalism initiative on Gabriola. So how did this happen? Well, uh, this is funded by uh, something called the Local Journalism Initiative, which was created around 2019. Uh, it is an initiative funded by the federal government, administered by various uh, intermediary organizations, uh, and it is intended to, well, you know what? It's intended to save journalism. Because journalism is having problems these days. Yes. Uh, so some people have the foresight to see this coming. And in particular, local journalism, journalism at our level, is in jeopardy. Local papers, and mostly their papers, newspapers, are dropping left and right. So the Local Journalism Initiative is an initiative to uh, support journalism of various kinds in what the uh, organization, Cactus, I'll tell you more about them, calls news deserts. That's a little drastic, perhaps. It is a bit dry here right now. But I don't know where that kind of desert. But what they mean is communities who are Maybe they've always been underserved, or they have become underserved by uh, news media. It is also, so, uh, so the local journalism initiative was, was started and funded uh, in order to address that growing problem. Uh, and it is administered by various uh, uh, NGOs, 
uh, for the newspaper sector. So, for example, I believe the sounder here um, on Gabriola uh, is receiving local journalism initiative funding to, uh, to employ my former student from VIU, Rochelle Stein Watton, as a journalist uh, for print media. There, there is an organization which is in supervising uh, local journalism initiative funding for radio stations, community radio stations. Uh, and now, or there has been, and now we are part of it, an initiative to support community TV. Now let me say by TV we mean anything on a screen. Anything on any screen. It might be on your TV because some of the programming we do will appear on uh, Shaw Cable. Uh, and as you know, you can take your phone and if you know how to do it, you can cast, you know, YouTube and anything else you wish onto your TV from your phone or anything else. Or you can just watch it on your computer or you can just watch it on your phone. So when we say TV, we mean anything on a screen of any kind. Uh, and that's what we're going to be producing programming for. So we are covered by, so I don't have my notes, and I'm not going to go get them. But it is an organization which has for years, a very long time, going back to the very earliest days of cable TV, community cable TV, advocated for uh, community journalism at a very local level. Uh, their acronym is CACTUS. Uh, and they are the people who uh, are administering the funding for this project. Uh, these projects are happening. This is the first time it's happening on Gabriola. But they're happening all across Canada. They're happening in both official languages. And there's a great energy for programming in numerous languages. Uh, in... Uh, what we call Canada. So it is an initiative that has been around a long time and we have finally been able to take advantage of it here on Gabriola. We formed, in order to receive the funding, we had to form a society. And we only did that about six weeks ago. <laughs> so we also need your money. But in order to receive the funding, the funding is for uh, professional journalists and videographers and some equipment to get them started. And those uh, journalists, our lead journalists, Teresa, you're going to be meeting momentarily. But the early uh, success of this project has been, we have been able to bring Teresa to Gabriola, and we have also been able to find on Gabriola a very skilled videographer, digital content creator, uh, Marshall Fries. Marshall uh, couldn't be here today. He's off island today. But uh, he is a person who moved here about six months ago. His family ha has lived here a long time. Um, and we were able to say, hey, how'd you like a job doing that stuff? So the uh, funding from uh, Cactus covers the fees for the professional journalists and videographers. And it also covers some equipment costs. Everything else we're going to have to fundraise somehow. But what we are most interested in today is volunteers, people who wish to create programming, not just watch it. The whole idea is, is for us to, to, you know, not be passive consumers of content. I used to say to my students in journalism classes and other classes at VIU, you know, you're here so you can become a creator of content, not just uh, a person sitting on the couch consuming it. And that is the very strong basis for the Local Journalism Initiative too. We together create, in this case, journalism, in this case, video journalism, about our community, Gabriola. And while we have very skilled people to help guide us, uh, it is actually a condition of the grant that 50%, at least 50% of the programming must originate with you. We, <laughs> thank you for asking. <laughs> Teresa will tell you. 
So that is the that is the basis for the program. That is the basis for the funding, uh, and we are delighted that we have been able to secure this for Gabriola. Now I want to give props to Kenza Kretzky, who even though he lives in the Netherlands, uh, is the administrator of the Life on Gabriola Community Bulletin Board. Ken, as some of you will know, was a uh, uh, crucial, fundamental to an effort to create a community radio station on Gabriola uh, a number of years ago, which foundered for want of a tower. But he has kept an eye on things, and he has kept an eye on Gabriola. And he's the guy who spotted this opportunity uh, and applied for it. And when it came through, because I helped him like with the application a bit, I was gobsmacked. I had said to him, Ken, wh what? We're not TV. What do you mean? But it turns out the people administering the funding are more inventive thinkers than I am. So now we are creating TV for Gabriola, and I want to give props to Ken Zakretsky for spotting the opportunity, which some of us have now taken up the torch to carry forward. So that is the basis for this project, and that's the reason for this event this afternoon to hopefully get you to volunteer. If you pick up the little handout over there, you will see the kinds of uh, help we need. And there's all kinds of help. And there is training available too. It is also part of our mandate to train. Some of us can train you in uh, journalism standards, the basics, the fundamentals of good journalism. Some of us can train you how to handle camera and edit video. So there's various people around that will help and will be producing programming themselves. But we need you to bring forward your ideas for shows, for series, to pitch, hey, why don't you cover this? Why don't you cover that? And also to say, and I'll help you do it if you'll help me help you do it. That is what Life on Gabriola TV is here for starting right now because our programming is going to be appearing in about uh, five days, I would guess. In fact, Jessie, one of our board persons, where's Jessie? Here she is. Jessie uh, is one of our uh, board members. She is here filming this today. That's why we're down here off the stage, uh, so we have enough light to do so. Um, and uh, that will be appearing on uh, line soon. So the programming will appear online in all sorts of ways. It will appear on the Life on Gabriella Facebook Community Bulletin Board, the largest on the island, 7,800 members. Uh, we're, we're, we're addressing that. It will, however, also address, uh, we, it will also appear on all the other boards. It will also appear uh, on YouTube. And it will also appear on the National Community Media Portal, which is maintained by Cactus where all the programming being created by dozens of communities, typically small communities, across the country appears. You can go, you'll be able to go there and uh, watch the programming for those other communities as well. And we also have a print component, which will be a quarterly digest of, of what we posted and what's upcoming that will also be available uh, in the community as well. So, uh, and eventually the programming will appear on cable TV too. So there will be myriad ways to uh, uh, watch it. And that's why we need myriad of you coming to create it. And I will be at that table and I will be glad to talk to you about how we can work together to do that. Having said that, I would like to now introduce to you uh, our lead journalist, a person we are very, very fortunate not only to have hired, but to have had move here to Gabriola as a result. <laughs> Teresa O'Leary. And when Jesse gives us the go ahead, then I will talk to you. But in the meantime, I will just say that I've only been here for two months and I love it. <laughs> And I am very delighted that I have found a place to live here on the island to do this work. We were talking about me working remotely because I might not have been able to find a place here. But, you know, the gods came and helped me out, so here we are. 
Good to go? Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. I'm so delighted to see so many of you. As Frank has said, I'm the lead journalist, but I'm only one person. We've got Marshall, so there's two people that are paid. But we have to do four hours of programming a week by December. We're not going to be able to do it just the two of us. There's no way. And in fact, the grant actually requires that we have volunteers, people from the community who are either contributing to the program, helping to develop the programs. Um, so there's two angles to this. There's volunteers who can help us behind the scenes, um, like Jesse's doing with the camera work, and we will provide training. So if you don't have the skills, but you have the interest, we will be doing training to allow you to get the skills to help us do the programming we need. Um, this is the form. I'm just going to show it to you. It's a nice form. Well done, guys. The guys on the board did this. And uh, so the positions needed. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I haven't been in front of a microphone in a while, obviously. <laughs> Popping all over the place. Okay, <clears throat> so the positions needed producers, hosts, interviewers, reporters, researchers, camera operators video editors, administrative help, transportation, fundraisers, and more. And the other way we want people in the community to help us is with ideas. We want to know what you want to know about. It's, this programming is all about Gabriola for Gabriolans. We have our ideas about what's important, of course, and we're going to pursue those. But we really want to hear from the community. So this week, I'll be posting on the Facebook Community Bulletin Board page, which is our main way we're going to communicate with you and the main way we're going to put out our programming. That's going to be the first, the first place any programming goes out. We'll go out on that page. So on that page this week, we're going to ask you a question about what is important to you. We have identified, because the grant actually uh, told us to do this or guided us to do this, <coughs> sorry, um, we had to identify five civic issues that are important to people on Gabriola. So what we've come up with, the environment, and of course that includes fire risk, which is very present right now, water, and all kinds of other stuff. Islands Trust declared a climate emergency in 2019. So on Tuesday, I'm going to be interviewing Islands Trust people about that to find out what was the plan, what is the plan? <laughs> and going forward, what will be the plan? Because, you know, with everything happening in Maui, Kelowna, Yellowknife, I mean, we're all worried about it. Um, I noticed on the Facebook page this week, actually, that there's a woman, Shirley Nicholson, who has been doing some emergency planning help on the island. So I'm going to be interviewing her, hopefully, this week, if I can get her. So, you know, we will be following. We aren't set up as a newsroom because we don't have the bodies. But we will be doing current affairs on the news, the important news that, that's coming out. So if it's the fire, we will pursue that and we'll find out, you know, I'm going to be talking to the fire chief this week. I'm going to be talking to Islands Trustees, RDN, and all kinds of people on Gabriola about what you think is important in this crisis that we're in right now. The second one we've identified is food security which is also related to the environment, obviously. Uh, but it's a big issue being on an island. We have to take care of our own food supplies because if the ferry can't come over, we're stuck. So that's a big issue for islands and for this island, for all of the Gulf Islands, actually. Uh, the third civic issue is services or lack of. Um, and that covers housing, medical care, and staffing for commercial uh, restaurants and retail outlets and so on. I think we all know that these are issues that are local and global. And that's one thing I want to say. Right now, local is global. It totally is. Right? We're here worried about fire. We're looking at Kelowna. We're looking at Maui. You know, so we're really connected, I think, as a world right now because of the internet. So I really view local as global. So I, I'm jumping all over the place, I know. I, I was a national reporter with CBC for a long time, and I covered many issues across the country, indigenous issues. I was a legal report, reporter in Montreal for a long time. 
Um, God, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting all the things that I did, but I was a producer, I was a documentarian, and I've won awards for all of my various roles that I played because I work really hard and I care deeply, and that's the thing. Um, as a journalist, if you don't have that heart that's caring for the stories, caring for the people, it doesn't push you as hard to, to pursue the stories, you know? When you've got that drive inside, which unfortunately or fortunately I do, I pursue things. So, The fourth uh, civic topic is truth and reconciliation, which is a national issue of great importance to all Canadians, and particularly in British Columbia. We have many Indigenous nations in this province. Um, so we are going to be tackling that issue, looking at what we're doing on Gabriola around truth and reconciliation, what's been done, what should we be doing? What do people think about that whole process? So we'll be exploring that as well with the uh, indigenous group in Nanaimo that is based here on, uh, I'm gonna try to pronounce it, I'm new, so I'm learning. And I think it's Snunaimuk. Did I say it right? Snunaimuk? Snunaimuk. Snunaimuk. Snunaimuk? I'm gonna work on it. I'm going to consult the actual nation to educate me. I'm new, as you know. So. The fifth item, or the fifth civic issue that we're looking at is arts and the economy. And I've been told since I came here, and I'm pretty sure it's a credible source, that the census says that there are more artists on this island earning a living from their art than anywhere else in Canada per capita. Which, that's not true? I gotta, no, that's not true, okay. So we are gonna, pardon? Okay, well, that's still pretty good. <laughs> but anyway, so I do, that's why I really want to pursue the arts from the point of view, not from a light angle, but from a hard angle of how does it contribute to our healthy community and our healthy economy on Gabriola? And we know that it is, there's so many artists on this island contributing. The other thing I believe is that artists, the way they approach life, can teach us a lot right now in the crisis that we're in in the world. And I want to explore those values with artists to find out what they can share with us. That's the great thing about this grant is that they really, they don't want fluffy stories about the arts, for instance. They want something solid. So in community television, as I said to you, by December, we have to put out four hours of programming a week, which is a lot of programming. So it'll be different than mainstream media. We're gonna go, we're delving deep and we're gonna go long. So our interviews could be 20 minutes to a half hour long. You might get bored and tune out, that's okay. But in this complicated, complex world we're living in right now, I think going, delving deeper is actually the answer. Now the main thing that I wanna do as a journalist here is to create, we're creating an opportunity for dialogue amongst the people who live here, the official people and just the regular people. Um, you know, as a journalist, my job is not to change things. My job is to observe and document and then record and put that out there for people to be informed and educated. And then the society can make the decisions. The society comes up with the solutions. And on this island, I have seen incredible community uh, participation in creating solutions. Like yesterday, I was at the market and I just learned about the clinic that was created by the foundation here that was created. I mean, so you guys are already doing it and we now are here just to capture these stories. And uh, again, we want them to come from you to us. And um, so we'll keep communicating with you on the Facebook page. Uh, we'll be sending out everything out there and we'll be asking constantly for feedback in. Then we will take whatever you put on Facebook, like if you come on there and you, you talk about racism and, and the problems around homophobia and such, then we'll take that and we'll make that into uh, some programming. We'll actually be able to take your idea and then either follow it up with our interviews or just put it on like that and then interview you you know, if you're willing. <laughs> so it really is about the community. Like Frank said, we have to have the volunteers. We already have a whole bunch lined up and I hope you will volunteer today if you're here for that purpose. 
We've got a special volunteer here today. Hello. Hello. What's your name? I'm Tatiana. <laughs> Hello. And why did you come today? Well, I wanted to talk about um, the project, and I wanted to ask you a few questions after. Oh, I see. Okay, can I ask you a few questions? Yes. So what kind of ideas do you have? What kind of ideas do you have for programming on our show? Is there a segment that you have in mind? Well, I have a few ideas, like mm, interviewing francophones on Gabriola because I speak French. Also a segment on local artists and writers, um, like Melinda Wilde, or I'm neighbors with someone who just illustrated a kid's book, or the great author, Sasha Colby, who just happens to be my mother. <laughs> <laughs> And also a youth ideas series, because I think kids have a lot of ideas and sometimes not a place to tell them to people. What kinds of ideas? <laughs> I think ideas on climate change, on anything really. Anything at all. Okay. And are you nervous getting up in front of these people? No. <laughs> I think we have a natural here. <laughs> All right, Titania. Well, that's awesome. Do you have some questions for me? I do. All right, I'll hold the mic while you ask. Thank you. If you want to hold it. No, you've got to look. Okay, sure. Okay, so clearly this is a very organized project with many professionals, many of whom are retired, probably. Um, so I just want to ask you, why are you doing this project, and what do you see for it? That's a great question. So the reason why I'm doing this project, all right, is because I have been a journalist for 40 years. I started my career up in Prince Rupert uh, in the Northwest, covered Haida Gwaii, covered the Niska, covered Gitsamwetsowetan, co covered the Gustafson Lake standoff, the Lyle Island standoff. I've covered indigenous issues extensively in this province. Um, so I've always been a journalist, or for 40 years I've been a journalist, and I've been watching what's been happening to journalism in the world, as we all have. And I really, really feel like this opportunity is going to fill a gap that is there in the current media landscape. And I would love to be a part of that because, you know, when I first went to Prince Rupert in 1984, um, CBC then had a station in Prince Rupert, a full station. And uh, the kind of journalism I want to do here is the kind of journalism we did there. And because it was more locally oriented at that time as opposed to today. So that's really the, I think I'm a journalist to my core. And even though I'm sort of semi-retired and trying to do other things, here I am because I couldn't resist this opportunity, and that's the truth. <laughs> um, another question is, you already mentioned um, training people for skills they need, like on-camera skills or video editing. So who would provide this training? Okay, well, um, I'll be involved in the training, as well as uh, Marshall and some of our board members who are very good at, uh, with technical skills around editing and uh, camera and so on. Um, and yeah, I mean, I guess that's, that's it. I, you know, my goal as a journalist is to just give, if people come in and want to be journalists and want to work in the journalist side of it as opposed to the technical side, uh, my goal is to just give you the basics for what you need to the core core teachings that you need that journalists practice. That's what I'm going to teach. So it's not going to be like an extensive year-long course at, at a university. <laughs> but it's going to be to the point and it's going to be really useful practical uh, tools for how to cover a story. Because a lot of people, they watch the news, but they really don't know how to act, to bring one to air. And so that's what I will provide, how to focus your story. That's one of the key things in journalism. At CBC, we had a focus statement. You always have to have a focus statement in order to know what your story is because they're often complex. There's often three or four angles in a story 
And you have to be able to zone in on that and, and identify. So those are the kinds of skills I'll be training people in as a journalist. And then Frank and the others will do the technical training. Thank you. Um, just one more question. So obviously you're interested in young people, because I'm here and I'm young. <laughs> um, what contributions do you think that young people could make to this project? That's such a great question. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, I think the, the voice of youth, and, and even like younger than youth children, it's very important right now because, um, you know, if you listen to some media outlets, the world is ending. It's very apocalyptic out there at times. There's a lot of depression. There's a lot of despair. There's a lot of hopelessness. There's a lot of like, what can we do? And I think youth and young people have in their hearts just the joy of life naturally and a positive attitude towards life. And so I think you can teach us, the older crowd, how to manage our emotions so that we don't become convinced we're at the end of the world. <laughs> I was just talking to a guy at the Gertie bus stop the other day. And, you know, he was a lovely man and... But it just, our conversation went so quickly into this rabbit hole of the end of the world. <laughs> and I just had to look at him and I said, you know what? Positivity for me right now is a survival tool. So I can't have this conversation with you, sorry. So I think young people like you, with your energy and your new eyes in the world, will really help us to balance out that. So there. And thank you very much for coming. Thank I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. We'll see ya. Okay. You're going to be on the show. Woo! She'll be appearing on the show at some point. So I'm saying show. So the idea is, I know I'm jumping around. Excuse me for doing that, but it's a Sunday. What can I say? <laughs> um, we will be, this week we will be putting out like programming on the bulletin board page. There will be interviews. There will be short segments, short little bits. But eventually what our goal is, is to have a current affairs show every week on a Wednesday, we'll put it out there. It'll begin, it'll be about an hour long, and by December, it'll be four hours long. <laughs> so, um, in that current affairs show, what we will do is we will package together all of the interviews that we were doing during the week and putting it out on the Facebook page and on the YouTube channel. So, we have a lot of programming to do, and we need voices from all ages, all backgrounds, the whole community needs to be represented on this channel, otherwise we are failing. So, put the word out to your friends, please. Okay, I, I think I said everything I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Let me just see. Do you want to know anything more about my background as a journalist? Yeah. You do? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I sort of jumped over that, I know. I don't really like to do that. But, yeah, okay, so... Um, in journalism? Oh, that's a, that's a funny story. I graduated from university with a political science degree and a sociology minor, and um, I didn't know what to do with it. And um, some friends were going to journalism school, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a journalist. It was very fickle at the beginning. I actually originally wanted to be a social worker, and that's what I went to school for, but then changed. Anyway, so... Um, so I was in St. John's, Newfoundland. So that's the other thing I should tell you. I am from Newfoundland and Labrador, but I have been living and reporting in BC for many of the last 40 years. Let's say 30 of the last 40 years, give or take, like coming and going. I lived here for periods of time and then I went back to Newfoundland. I'm bi-coastal. That's my condition. It's either BC or it's Newfoundland. Anyway, so I was in Newfoundland. I just finished you know, school and uh, I was looking for a job. And uh, so I took my resume and I went around to all the media outlets in town and everybody said, go back to journalism school and learn this, you know, job before we give you a job. One said, do you have any ideas? CBC Radio. CBC Radio was my home for 20 something years as a daily news reporter. Uh, but anyway, so that's how I got into it. So I went in and I talked to the executive producer there uh, in St. John's and he said, do you have any ideas? And I said, well... I said, the George Street is being turned into a pedestrian street for, and it's just all going to be pubs, and there'll be no cars on it. 
and people will be able to just walk and drink and party and have a good time on that street. And uh, so there was a city council meeting that night. They said, go to the meeting. And I said, okay, so off I go to the meeting. I knew nothing about journalism at this point. I just want you to know. Uh, before I left the office, they gave me a, a piece of a, a, a tape recorder, a Sony, and they taught me how to watch the VU meter for when people were talking, and then I could know when they were distorting their voices or if it was a good level. That's how much training I had on my first story. But anyway, so I went to the, to the city council, did all my interviews, came back to the station. It's nighttime. Nobody was there. There was no producer there to help me. But there was a writer broadcaster who was finishing her story for the next morning. So she's like, who are you? And I'm like, well, I'm Teresa O'Leary. You know, I have this tape from this meeting. I'm supposed to do a story on it. And she just looks at me like, oh, God, right? She's got to show me how to do it now. So she says, uh, okay, well, first thing, you have to get your tape dubbed. What's dubbing? <laughs> That's how little I knew. <laughs> anyway, so went through the process. She told me to pick out some clips from my interviews and write around it and write an intro. And I did it. Then she took me down to the studio. I voiced it. And boom, boom, it went to air the next morning. <laughs> I was shocked. No one was more shocked than I when that happened, I tell you. So that was the beginning, and I loved it. And I think the thing with me, sometimes you have a natural ability that you don't know about. My voice is deep, as you know, and it was a good radio voice. And back in the day, radio, CBC Radio valued the voice, and they would hire people with a low timber like I have. And so that actually just opened up the world of radio to me, actually, my own voice, which I didn't even know, you know, till that experience. So anyway, and then I did a little bit of freelancing, learning a little bit there in Newfoundland for a year. And then I applied for the job in Prince Rupert and uh, got the full time job as a CBC reporter at the age of 21 years old, flew across the country. And, you know, we didn't have Internet back then. Long distance calls were expensive, <laughs> but it was an adventure. And uh, I don't regret it. And when I went to Rupert, like I said, there was a CBC station there, and there were major issues going on that we were covering, like Haida Gwaii. Uh, I was there on the island of Lyle Island in 1985, which was a pivotal moment in this province's history around land claims. And uh, I was on the island for three weeks reporting for National Radio News. And uh, I won a Gabriel Award for that work. Now, to me, I won the award not because I did anything special. I'm the messenger. That's all I am. I'm the storyteller. I'm the messenger. Um, the reason why I won that award was because um, it was an incredibly important story. And I happened to be the one telling it. And how lucky for me. But anyway, so that set my career off. And then I went to Montreal. I was a legal reporter there for four years. At Palais de Justice. Je parle français. <laughs> and I became bilingual there and reported on um, the Fabricant trial. Some of you guys might remember that. It was the worst mass murder in Canada at the time. And um, I did a bit of Oka. There's a riot in Oka I went to. Covered a lot of hostage takings in Montreal. Let's put it this way. I'm 40 years veteran in this business, and I know the business. And although the technologies have changed, nothing else, nothing has changed. Journalism is still the same as it's always been. It's about who, what, where, when, and why, right? Those five whys. Uh, did I say five? What, when, where, who, and why. Uh, sorry, I missed one. <laughs> anyway, so any questions, and then I'll finish up. No? Okay. Well, thanks again for coming. Really look forward to hearing from you guys, either as volunteers or as community citizens. If you have any suggestions about segments that you'd like to see, we're developing segments with community partners. So we'll be hopefully doing a health segment, we'll be doing a youth segment, um, you know, so we're just looking for ideas as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, Teresa O'Leary. As I say, we're very lucky to have her here on the island. Very freshly, but here. So we want to wrap up. I know the smoke is a problem for some people. Uh, I'd like to, before uh, we do, address uh, the question about uh, the platforms we'll be using uh, and then answer any other quick questions you might have. Uh, we will all be here lingering afterwards to further answer questions. So we, uh, we want to distribute 
uh, programming on the Life on Gabriel Community Bulletin Board because it is the largest on the island with 7,500 no, 7,800 plus uh, members. Um, not that all of them are active, but that's uh, potentially a very large audience uh, of Gabriolans and people off island too. So the idea is rather than making people come to us, we'll go to where they are. This is something I've seen work very, very well in the performing arts, and uh, I'm actually interested in the idea of applying it to journalism. Um, we have made a proposal to uh, take over supervision of that board. Uh, because we want to make sure it is a good context for the journalism we're doing. Uh, as part of that, if uh, we do so, we would um, in, uh, undertake a review of the uh, modding policies of it to make sure, again, that it's an appropriate uh, place for our programming and for the community to have discussion about our programming, good and bad. Uh, so that is a proposal we have made, and um, Ken is currently undertaking a process of public comments. So I encourage you to provide your comments on the notion that we might assume supervision of that board. But as I've said, the programming will appear uh, on other Facebook uh, boards as well, on YouTube, and on the National Community Media Portal. And frankly, anybody can share it anywhere they want. Does that address your question? I don't know if the person's here anymore. Does, I hope that addresses that question. Are there other questions? Other questions I can answer? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so this is a very interesting question. So uh, some of you may know that uh, Meta uh, has decided to suppress the distribution of Canadian news content. Uh, we could discuss that. I won't right now. I will just say that having help, uh, along with Google, helped to con to kill the news media, including in Canada, yeah, they might take a different approach. But at any rate, yes, they are currently suppressing the distribution of Canadian news to Canadians. Uh, we are in a slightly fortunate position, I hope, and this is another reason we uh, want to use the Life on Gabriel Community Bulletin Board. It is not identified as a news media platform. So my feeling is we can fly under the radar until this thing gets sorted out. So um, I, I'm hopeful that for that reason, and we are also proposing to take over the old uh, Gabriella Co-op radio uh, page uh, and renaming it as the you know, Life on Gabriella TV page, I guess. But it, it is also not identified as a news media site. So uh, what we're our, our plan right now is to fool Facebook's algorithms. And if that doesn't work, we'll, we'll find, figure out something else. <laughs> Meantime, if you have any thoughts personally uh, about the uh, uh, approach of Meta to Canadian news for Canadians, I suggest you take it up with them. Any other questions I can answer quickly? I, I'm also glad to talk to you at the table. Yes. Well, we will, um, so among other things, we're going to create a pop-up TV studio. With, uh, we have some equipment now. We will soon have a switcher, which will allow us to create a TV studio, basically, in various situations. Uh, we, so we anticipate that at times we'll be, I don't know, hopefully maybe at the GAC Hall. At other times, you know, who knows where, the Aggie Hall, wherever, uh, recording. But uh, we, are, we will not have a fixed physical TV station, no. And a lot of it will be coming from on location, like this. Uh, a lot of it will be people in their homes or their places of business. And I think Teresa is planning to do what are called streeters this coming week. So uh, watch for her at Folklife Village, asking people questions. We are released from all that. So I'm going to quickly tell you a little story. I remember that uh, the other night I realized, what did I want to be when I grew up? And at first I wanted to be a TV cameraman. And then I remembered, oh yeah, I wanted to run a TV station. <laughs> Seriously, when I was about 10. I went, what, do I want, what do I want to be when I grow up? I want to run a TV station. So watch what you wish for, especially at age 10. But this is a TV station. It's just a TV station of a new kind. 
All right, I'm going to uh, call this to a close, but we will all be here to talk with you further. Now, I would like to point out that over there are forms to sign up as volunteers individually, and that's mostly what we hope you will do today. Uh, look and see what we need, propose other things you can do to help out. Um, there is also over there uh, a sponsorship form, which is intended more for businesses and organizations. So please make sure you get the right form. But if you happen to be a representative or involved with a business or organization, we really need you as a sponsor. And yes, we will work deals. So there are two different forms over there, one for individual volunteers, one for uh, sponsorships by businesses and organizations. Yes, Ben? What a good question, Ben. <laughs> Donate money. So yes, as I said, the funding goes to our journalists. It covers their fees. That's the fundament of this. Uh, and some of it, not much, goes to equipment. So we have acquired some equipment. We will acquire more. We do need to raise money. Now, we have just launched a GoFundMe. Because what else do you do? Uh, and you will be hearing more about that over the next week. But you can go find it now on GoFundMe, Life on Gabriola TV. And if you are so inclined, please donate. Uh, and we will also have a Patreon campaign eventually. But today, you can go put money in that donation jar over there. It says donations right on it. And we would certainly welcome your donations. And we will be continuing. If you cannot donate time to this, or that's not your inclination, we certainly hope you might support us financially. How long will this last? Well, yes, the funding will probably roll over in March, but that's not a guarantee that we will actually be properly positioned to continue. So we will have to find additional funding. If you can help us out starting now, please do. All right, I'm going to uh, ask Ben to maybe uh, uh, play some background music again as we mingle. Please stay to chat. Please stay to chat with... Oh, no, I know what I need to do. I would like all the members of our board who happen to be able to be here this afternoon to please come up and join me. Jesse, who else? Chris, uh, Nathan, Ray, Gary. Whoever I've forgotten. Oh, no. I'm not supposed to do that. Ben. Um, not uh, all our members were be able to be here today, but... These people, Jesse Zhang, who actually is from Seisuchen, uh, Nathan Tinkham, the great Nathan Tinkham, the great Chris Bowers, the great Gary Holmes, the great Ben Sams, and the great Ray Appel are all members of our board. And they have been doing a huge amount of work in the last two weeks <laughs> to throw this thing on its feet really fast. Woo! Uh, oh, who are we missing today? No, is this everybody? Could this possibly be everybody? Wow. I think this is maybe all. Yes, I think this is all of us. Isn't that surprising? <laughs> and you. We we look forward to bringing. Uh, look, we look forward to bringing for, uh, more people onto our board, and we look forward to diversifying it. Uh, we need indigenous representation on this board. We need uh, uh, more women on this board. And we need more non-binary representation on this board. So we will be looking forward to making this a more diverse board as we go forward. Uh, yes, Ben, uh, ben is actually uh, talking to us already about having EDIA policies around inclusiveness and diversity. I can tell you that from working in theater, those are very important values in theater. Not so much in journalism yet. And we have talked about making sure we uh, work to change that. All right? And so, if I may, I'm going to call the formal part of this to a close. Thank these board members again. Thank all of you for coming out. We hope you will volunteer. Uh, and uh, we will be here to talk with you more about that for a bit yet. Uh, here she is. Oh, yeah. So uh, the programming mandate is Gabriola-centric, Gabriola first. And most of our beginning programming is going to be a about Gabriolans, made by Gabriolans. Uh, but we will uh, also expand out, our mandate is also to the adjoining islands. I'm not going to try to name them because I'll leave one out. The adjoining islands and eventually the entire Salish Sea region. So uh, we are beginning focused here. We're finding our center of balance here. 
uh, and we will move outwards from here. All right? Thank you for being here. Come talk to us. Gabriel, Life on Gabriel TV.